Hello and welcome to the Cat Scrappiness YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today I'm going to start off by inking a bit of a night sky. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of squeeze lemonade and this is going to be the moon in my night sky. So I've sort of blocked that out first just so that I don't accidentally um, ink over that with my other darker colors. Then for the front, I'm going to work my way from the uh, bottom and go up. So at the bottom most, I'm starting off with Twisted Citron. That's going to be a bit of grass. Then I've got Carved Pumpkin here. So the night sky is going to be a little bit more of a sunset. So this is going to be at the very um, bottom closest to the horizon. It looks a little splotchy, but I think that this is more to do with my little brush, uh, blending brushes. And so I gave them a really, really good clean, but I think I might, I might actually switch out my, um, blending tools for domed sponge daubers because I used that a little bit later and I feel like that works so much better. So the second color was abandoned coral and above that, Right now I'm putting on shaded lilac, but that's not the actual color I want to use. The color I want to use is this one, which is Dusty Concord, but my Dusty Concord is actually in a Distress ink and not an Oxide ink. For me, Oxide inks tend to blend a lot better, and mostly that's because they sit on top of your paper for a little bit before they completely soak in and dry. And it's for that reason that you can actually move it around a little bit better, whereas your Distress ink is a dye base ink, so that's going to start to soak into your papers. And it can be a, a little bit more challenging, uh, not impossible, but just a little bit more challenging to, to blend. So I find when that's the case and there's a Distress ink that I want to use, I try to find a lighter shade and then put a layer of that down first. <laughs> And then that tends to help any Distress Ink that's layered on top to move around a little bit better. So then my two blues are Blueprint Sketch and Chipped Sapphire. And you can see I'm, I've uh, transitioned to using um, my dauber, my sponge dauber, and the domed one in particular, I like quite a bit. The flat one works okay. Um, but I think that there's a little bit more potential for lines, um, whereas the domed, uh, sponges, they don't have that, they don't have that harsh line. So, uh, I think you get, my experience has been that you get a softer blend that way. Now that one layer uh, of oxide inks, um, is down, I'm going to go back in and just add, um, a little bit more color where I feel like maybe it's a little bit too splotchy or maybe some, too much of that color has, um, kind of been taken over by another color. That's the be beautiful thing about oxide inks is that because they do sit on top and they are a more opaque ink, um, you can go over, darker colors a little bit and actually um, still have that color come through. Okay, so now I have already die cut out a lot of really fun Halloween elements. You can see the die set off to the side there. I'll link to it in the description box below along with everything else that I use on this card. But the bat, even though there are bat dies in this die set, I really liked the size and scale, particularly of the the um, wings. They're a little bit more visible um, from the pattern paper uh, that released this month. So I decided to just fussy cut that one out rather than use the die. Um, there's actually two dies for two different bats in the die set. But I love the the one that came from the paper pad, so I decided to just fussy cut that out. And that's always an option. If you um, have designer paper that 
have uh, large graphics, um, you can always just fussy cut out of them and then use those as elements on your card. This release is just jam-packed full of different uh, embellishments, um, sequins, confetti, sprinkles, and there are so many beautiful um, colors to choose from, but also a lot of really fun sprinkle mixes for both Halloween and for the holiday, Christmas holidays. So I've got one that I've just tipped a little bit into um, my triangular tray here. And the witch on the broom was a really special find. And so I um, knew right away when I saw her that I wanted to use her on my card and put her right in that moon area so you can really see her flying across. The um, what I'm applying to my fence here is Kalau 3D glue gel, and I love it for thin die cuts like these because I want to add a little bit of dimension and space so that I can still tuck things behind there, but it can be um, really really hard to cut foam that thin, and so the glue gel is fantastic because I can just squeeze out a little bit wherever I need and it gives me that dimension. Just don't push down super hard. And I'm going to do that with the bat wings too. So where the bat body is, I've placed some regular PBA glue. So that attaches flat to my scene. But on the wings, I actually put a little bit of the 3D glue gel so that the wings are actually a little bit lifted. And one thing with the glue gel, if you do um, accidentally get it somewhere that you don't want, it's because it's not a water-based glue, just give it a little bit of time to dry and then you can just rub that glue right off of your paper. It won't tear up your paper or anything. It might remove some of the ink, but it won't tear up your paper. And you can just use your finger to rub it off or use a gum eraser and, um, and it'll be just fine. So the other uh, little um, confetti pieces that I love from the sprinkle um, pack are these stars. And there's actually two different colors, blue and this sort of um, bluish teal or turquoise maybe. And they, they're also two different sizes too. The blue ones are a little bit smaller. So I thought I would use both to dot or sprinkle across my night sky, give it a little bit of sparkle and shine. And this sprinkle mix, super cute. So it's called Groovy Ghouls. And there's the Frankenstein monster, um, just his head, which if you look at it, there's just so much detail in these little, um, I think they're clay pieces and it's just fantastic. So I've, I've put quite a few of um, those heads right near the tombstone and then I picked out some jack-o'-lanterns as well. And in the mix there are these little ghost clay pieces too. But I tried to find a, a, a way to incorporate them as well, but I couldn't I couldn't find a good way to, to fit them in. There's these sprinkle mixes are just really fun to just um, kind of dig through a little bit and and um, and look at them um, as individual elements. Of course, they're going to be super fun on a shaker card, but I think they're, they can be really fun individual elements as well. And it just gives your, your card so much detail. And, um, I can imagine getting a card like this and just, you know, scanning it, just picking up all of these little details. Um, and so, one thing I do want to mention, I was so excited to start building up my scene and that I didn't um, do what I would normally do, which is to attach my background panel to my card base first. That way I can give that panel a really nice um, burnish and make sure that it's attached really firmly to my card base. So if, if that's ever the case with you, I would definitely recommend um, using what I use, which is liquid adhesive, because um, often I'll use 
my ATG gun to attach my panel, but with a liquid adhesive, um, you're going to get a more permanent hold where the, a lot of times a dry double-sided adhesive tape, it does rely on good pressure and a nice strong burnish to really maximize the strength of that adhesive. So, um, so I would recommend if you're doing it a little bit out of order like I've done today, uh, use a liquid adhesive and it'll hold just fine. So there's a close-up look at my final card. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you haven't already, we would love for you to subscribe to the Cat Scrappiness channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye!